everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to try some cool vat dyeing on some Knit Picks Gloss Roving. This roving is 70% merino wool, 30% Tessa silk top. I am going to pre-soak the fiber for probably 10 to 15 minutes while we set up the vat. So not necessarily very long, but it's just in plain tap water. In this plastic shoe box, I have two cups of water and I am going to add in some dry powder. Um, so it's more accurate to measure out dye by weight versus volume, but I have about a quarter teaspoon of the dye, which I am slowly adding to the water. Now, the reason why you want to paste your dyes normally is that <laughs> Uh, doing things this way, things won't all necessarily dissolve. Like there, there will be some clumps in here, um, which you can see held by that ridge. But the thing is that I don't mind today if we get uneven color absorption. I sort of want a tonal roving just with lots of good color saturation all around. That is my goal today. Okay, so to our teal color, I want to add some, a little bit of our 1% stock solution of Twilight Gray. And I'm just sort of pouring and going by feel here today, very like non-specifically. But you can see with those streaks that we do still have some color that has not yet dissolved. Actually, this is doing a pretty good job of mixing it. Um, it's much easier, also, I think, to paste up the dye than it is to do things this way. But I sort of wanted to give it a shot because I've been seeing people dump stuff in a lot of water. Uh, so, yeah, that actually doesn't seem too, too bad. I think there's probably some stuff not dissolved. Um, the water that I'm using is cool. So, anyway, I'm going to go and add, I think, eight cups of water to our vat. Okay, we've got a lot of good water in here. And you can see we've sort of got this deep, deep teal color, which I'm excited for. And now we can add the fiber. And hello, you can see my mask, which I can actually go take off now because we don't have any more powder. Okay, now we're going to add the roving. Um, which again has only been pre-soaking for a few minutes. Um, I'm not removing all the liquid. I just don't want it to drip as I carry it over here. Um, so here is our 100 grams of the gloss roving. And I am going to submerge it into our vat, which immediately you can see that we're taking up the color unevenly because I did not pre-soak it very long. And so there's areas that are more wet and less wet. I don't really want to ruin this, but I do want to spread it out a bit. And I'm at this stage trying to remove air from it so we can absorb liquid. But again, I am excited for something that is going to feel tonal, but should still have really, really good color coverage overall. Okay, and now I'm going to let this uh, pre-soak here, just inside with no acid, for I think another 15 minutes. Okay, there's definitely some spots that are going to be more white. Trying to gently poke and remove uh, air bubbles, which actually I think is working fairly well. But again, there are going to be some light patches, and that's just sort of the way that it is. Okay. Let's go ahead and add our acid. Um, so I think we've got at least 10 cups of water in here. One, two, 
three, and as I pour it on, you can see that the color hasn't struck yet because that color is mo moving. Four, and then five, just to sort of bring that home. You can see that the adding that sort of pushed some of that liquid color away. And I suppose I could lift it up and move it around. Um, I mean, not right now, because I'm not wearing gloves. Mm. I don't think so. I think things will spread. And again, I want sort of kettle dyed. There will be some light patches. Hopefully, what I don't want is there to be like one light patch, but I think that they'll be pretty reasonably distributed. All right, and now I'm going to place on the lid and go and set this outside. Here we go outside in the sun. I am planning on leaving this fiber here on the table all day. I'm not planning on moving it around. Um, technically, I suppose there is some solar dyeing brought in here, but really I'm just bringing it outside to set it out of the way. And I'll leave it here all day. The water will warm up, but I am planning on steam setting the fiber in the end because I don't want to have to do a ton of washing and I really want that color to be set. It is nighttime and it's honestly still a bit warm. I know you can't really see, but hopefully you can see that the water is mostly clear. Ironically, it is warm still in the center, although the edges have started to cool off as our daytime heat is gone. Um, I am going to leave this overnight. Um, and honestly, I'm going to try leaving it right here overnight and hoping that it is safe <laughs> and that no harm will come to it. And then tomorrow we will steam set this roving so that way we can make sure that that color is set because I don't want to have to deal with bleeding if I can at all. But I'm really excited to see what it looks like in the daylight. I finally brought this inside 27 hours after I set it up and it's there's still some color in the water but I'm gonna try rinsing it before steaming it because I'm really curious okay I am going to transfer this fiber into some lukewarm water there we go and you can see that there's some color left not a lot though. So it's possible that this is effectively solar dyed um, because it was warmed and ha was exposed to heat. It's just I know that silk in my experience can take more time, more heat, and more acid for the colors to absorb. So if we see a lot of bleeding then um, I have no problem adding this with more vinegar and steam setting it. Um, that's not a lot of bleeding though. In the second soak, there's definitely, definitely some color in there. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove most of that water um, and spread out our roving and we're gonna add some vinegar. And a big old splash of vinegar. Okay, and wait a minute. Now, we're going to go ahead and steam set this. I added the roving to a steam basket on my stovetop, and I am going to steam this for 20 minutes. When the 20 minutes are up, I'll turn off the heat and leave it covered and let it cool completely in the pot so it can get a little more heat. Now let's wash our roving that we did heat set and this time I am not expecting to see any color bleed out. Um, I'm going to add just a tiniest little hint of this soap and let this soak in here. Um, then we will rinse out the soap and put this through the spin dryer and hang up the roving to dry. But yeah, that water is perfectly clear. So, woohoo! 
Here is the finished dry roving that we dyed using a cool vat technique and then followed it up with some steam setting uh, because the color didn't really set completely just from the heat of the sun outside. This roving is 70% merino, 30% silk, and it's not one that I have dyed very many times. I think I've only dyed this roving base once before. I love the tonal quality that we got here. I will say though, I am disappointed that the final color is not more saturated. I tend to forget that silk can absorb a lot more color and that roving as a whole tends to feel a little bit paler overall with the same amount of dye as if you were going to dye yarn. So maybe I should try this again with more of the color. But you know, it might not absorb all that color, so we'll, we'd have to play around with this and tweak the technique. But I think what we got is really beautiful. Texture-wise, this roving is still completely spinnable, but it is a little more felted. Eh, felted isn't quite the right word, but I was able to fluff it up with ease, and I think it would draft and spin with no extra effort. Not like the time I was trying to spin completely felted fiber, but it's not as perfect as it felt beforehand. So I think that this, in general, is a little bit more finicky, and I need to be use a lot more care with this blend as I would with the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Roving, even though that is also non-superwash. I have spun a lot of merino silk in the past, but I haven't spun, I don't think I've spun this exact blend from Knit Picks, and not one that I've dyed of this blend. So yeah, that's something that I'm really excited to play around with. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, like, turn on notifications. You guys know the drill by now. And let me know in the comments if you would like to see me do more things outside or with this type of fiber. If you are a new fan or an old fan of Chemnitz and want to support us on another level, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. I offer Chemnitz patrons some really cool perks like behind the scenes sneak peeks, early access to new content, and more. You can find links in the video description and iCard. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.